Hello everybody and welcome back to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will, I'm a D&D sex icon and I'm back today with yet another episode of your favorite esports, Dungeons and Dragons. I have with me my uh, competitive team of Dungeons and Dragons players here today. We're going for the uh, the Nationals, which is the big 100k prize. Uh, we're facing off against uh, some pretty good teams uh, today, so I'm super excited. We're going to play all of our Magic the Gathering cards uh, in order to play Dungeons & Dragons to defeat the End Dungeon Dragon, uh, which is, of course, what I hear the CEO of Dungeons & Dragons do. Uh, anyway, let's get around to casting crew and figure out who we are and who we're playing. We've got Josh, our Dungeon Master with us today. Josh, how's it going? Uh, I'm good. I'm over here in uh, B6 to B8 uh, as is used in uh, in battleships which is uh being integrated into D, D. if you're not on board well you know you'll you'll catch on pretty quick uh we're playing a great uh team today uh we've got um some really interesting people we've got uh calvin who's uh playing support tall school obviously uh, he's a great guy i'm really looking forward to that uh we've got uh Will, in, in sort of the wings, uh, he's kind of been having a bit of an off-season, but we're hoping Put to see him sort of swing back. Yeah, exactly. He's, uh, I mean, we've had a talk beforehand. Um, now, our wild card is most definitely a little cup of joe, uh, as uh, for the last couple of I don't know if it's through latency lag or glitches or wonderful donations by you guys, but it's just been going crazy for her. So a bit of a sporadic season. Uh, finally, uh, we have uh, Tia, who's kind of keeping the party uh, together as best they can um, by just having uh, massive tantrums uh, as much as physically possible in character. Um, now, she is suffering with that mid-season injury of having her arm cut off, but we're hoping to see a strong comeback from her today. So uh, let's go around, uh, meet some of the team, see how they're doing. Let's do that. We have uh, Jess with us today. Jess, how you doing? I am doing fantastic. Uh, we will see what, what my wildcard-ness brings to the game today uh, with Lucy, the, um, well wizard druid thing combo she's she does all the magic she's here with all the magic i'm bringing the magic awesome awesome uh we also have tool school back of us tonight school how's it going my friend well i'm just happy to be here it's so great uh to be able to participate in this level of competition and uh just trying to bring real solid performance to uh my game today hoping uh best of luck to uh, who, our team members and to uh our competitors as well let's have a good clean game out there i'm real excited to be here and uh thank you for having me i'll be playing calvin our bard and uh there in my support uh position to uh, make sure that the uh, rest of the team can perform at their uh, highest levels as this uh competition does require great stuff great stuff to school uh and of course uh soon to be the, the champion of this team uh laurelani how's it going i am great uh <laughs> i'm great <laughs> i can't i was in esports for four years and it's too real like i'm already crying i'm actually the coach that was brought in from another team but traded mm -hmm. legally and i know all the strats from the other teams so we're just gonna kill it no matter what we do we don't need rules or regulations because esports and forget contracts and protecting your players no it's great i'm gonna be playing sarah <laughs> the level six or level five fighter um, cleric level one champion fighter of St. Cuthbert. And I'm looking forward to this never being esports ever. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, as for myself, I'll be playing Curtis Fearson, the human rogue, uh, and he's here today to run a tavern successfully and then to infiltrate into the enemy army and uh figure out how that goes but before we start today's game i'll remind you guys of the sponsors on our professional DD esports league today fancygrounds.com uh, go to fancygrounds.com the only place to uh partake in these leagues that are happening as we speak uh, Fancy Grounds provide us with all of the esports equipment uh, that our sports team here uh, use to stay at the top of our games. Um, they have all of the dungeons and the dragons over there. You can check out their licenses for free as a demo version, and of course, uh, their first license starts at $4. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Andrew. 
Um, yeah, the uh, the team shirt, team mug, towel are getting here pretty soon. Don't worry, the merch is coming in swiftly. We're working on that. Uh, and of course, last but not least, we are sponsored here by WaylandGames.co.uk. Uh, if you're looking to take part in your own league, maybe set up your own uh, at home, maybe like a, a fireside gathering because it's in the uh, you can definitely do that at waylandgames.co.uk. They have all of their miniatures. You can probably, you can definitely buy Magic the Gathering cards at waylandgames.co.uk, actually. So there you go. Check those guys out. Of course, you can follow their, the show. Uh, other miniatures. Yeah. <laughs> other miniatures do are able to work in uh, Hearthstone and uh, on Magic as well. That is true. That is absolutely true. Uh, also, here's a tweet for you guys. 20 retweets, viewer decision, where you guys get to, uh, there in the esports audience, decide something which happens next in our game. Last but not least, donate to affect the game by giving players that ones. That 20 is wild magic surges, as Andrew already has done, giving each player a wild magic surge with his share there. Thank you, my friend. We'll get into that, but before we do, I'll hand over to our Dungeon Master, Mr. Encounter Josh, to remind us of what happened last week on the show. Uh, yeah, just uh, got my jersey on, ready to uh, to professionally nice. play now. So uh, all is well. Um, yeah, no, uh, it's been uh, a week. Um, so let's give a quick recap as to uh, last week's game. We saw uh, some pretty strong plays, a uh, bit of a drastic shift in tone. Um, the party went from sort of playing in that uh, really forest kind of uh, heavy tree uh, kind of area to to absolute insanity fucking happening. I... Let's say wild magic surges <laughs> for me. Thanks, Isreva. I've just realized, yeah, Isreva is just going round, isn't he? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, you're next. Wonderful, next week. Okay, so um, yeah, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how the party act now they've uh, returned to civilization. Um, they left the forest behind having mm. found out that uh, there was an upcoming match uh, in Rivercroft that um, there was the invading army coming in. So uh, they've decided that they're going to come forward. They're playing defensive this week. i um, going to mm. stick it out. Uh, they've really know the area. Um, they've got some, they've, they've got a month to prepare for this match. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, they're not winning is esports down. I love it. This is like my own personal hell come to life. <laughs> 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 we, we've broken Tia. We have completely so broken the party, Tia. The party has inherited a brothel, which I believe Tall School named at the end of the last episode, and I believe it was a super shitty name, and I, for the life of me, cannot remember what it was. Would you like to refresh everyone's memory if you can? You are muted. Oh, yeah, muted. I am muted, um, and uh, I wrote it down. Um, <laughs> so no one's to remember it. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> it was like a really long time ago. It was like some shitty long march plan, right? Oh, no, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the uh, uh, March's End. Extend. March's March End. End. March's End. There so, we go. So, um, the March's End is... There we go. Uh, was going to be... Uh, what was left of the Silver Serpent Brothel, which has been left to you guys because it came to the attention of the party that uh, whilst Ali Remo, the current owner of the Silver Serpent, was leaving, uh, he was looking to sell or give. Like, he had no use for the tavern. He took everything that was inside of it, uh, all the workers, and was leaving for Ironheart. But you guys um, are human. And the oncoming force doesn't have a problem with humans. It's just halflings and other creatures like himself that are going to have to scarper or get treated rather terribly. So, um, yeah, you guys now own a tavern, and that is pretty much where we're going to... Uh... A magnanimous dispensation. God damn it. Win for a 50 pounds. Josh is my man. Is this true, Josh? Is there, some, is there some big reveal we'd like to make here now? <laughs> Wait. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, so, no, I just I had a side blank there. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm man. terrified. All right. I'm terrified as it is. So everyone has one wild magic surge to roll, um, and I have nine in total, which I will read out 
henceforth. Uh, okay, so Curtis is invulnerable to normal weapons for 1d6 turns. Okay. Uh, I also have a compartment in my torso which is able to carry small items. That happened to you That's before. pretty dope. I think that did. That happened to me ages ago Seto in Numenera. Yashuan. Seto, Seto Yashuan. Seto Yashuan. Yashuan. Just my uh, you samurai. Stole pers- you stole a samurai, person right. in there at some, at some point. Like right, a yeah. part of a person, yeah. yeah. Yes, and when I was, you are a man. Okay, um, my next one is that my teeth and tongue fall out when I next open my mouth. Well, fuck. <laughs> we'll that All right. real quick. My teeth and tongue fall out when I next open my mouth. That's so gonna be Curtis one will never speed. speak again. That's, that's I will be never speak again. Uh, <laughs> my weapon sprouts 1d100 teeth along its length. Uh, dope. Yeah. It sprouts uh, 38 teeth. Cool. Um, yeah. My presence makes foliage appear sickly and blighted. Cool. Um, all blades within 50 yards are engraved with cryptic sigils. Nice, okay. Um, the next fire-based magic used nearby produces water instead of fire. So your firewall is going to be a water pool. Um, and okay. when I next, this is my favorite one, when I next enter my home, it drifts slowly out to sea. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> my house drifts slowly out to sea. Uh, maybe I have a house on the riverside. Um, okay, uh, so Lucy's wild magic is that tomorrow she meets someone convinced that Lucy doesn't exist. Cool. Okay. Um, I mean, most people wanted to kill me, so this is an improvement. <laughs> uh, Sarah is healed of all damage, but his clothes and gear vanish. Goodbye, Bo. It was nice. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was nice. And Calvin's next plant-based magic used nearby turns its user to a vegetarian. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Lucy's a druid now, so yeah, that works. Yeah, well, speaking of druid, um, this is going to work rather well. First of all, sorry, what was Sarah's one again? She lost... She you she's don't... healed of all damage, but she loses her clothing and gear. Okay. Right. So you guys are currently standing in a tavern um that is pretty much entirely barren. There's nothing here. Uh the bar's been cleared out. The bar itself is remained because it's you know structurally part of it. But um everything is uh pretty much blank and uh, odd looking. It looks smaller somehow without any furniture in it. Um, and you uh, thought it would look bigger. You do still have the booths. You've got the stage uh, and you've got some back rooms uh, with like a, a toilet area and uh, like a dressing area. But the dressing area is empty. The storehouses is empty. Uh, there are no guards. Um, they've taken the candles. They've taken anything that wasn't properly bolted down and it's all loaded up most of it's already left but there is one final wagon sat there and uh Ari remo is standing wistfully smoking um some kind of narcotic uh out of a pipe and just staring at this place that you get the feeling he's a little reluctant to leave behind uh now that all is said and done He's got a couple of his thugs still loading the last few bits on, but you guys are step and like the back doors have been opened up wide where sort of stuff is brought in, and uh, he's just watching in as you guys stand in this big open space. And he, right, well, I'm almost sorry to see this place go. Anything else you need before I hear? Uh, Scarpa. Nothing jumps to mind. Uh, you've been very useful already, Mr. Remo. And we promise to look after the place for what it's worth. Right. Well, if you guys ever make your way to uh, Ironheart, uh, oh, 
reaches over and he opens sort of like a briefcase, clicks it open, reaches inside and rummages around and finally he produces um, what look like uh, playing cards. Um, he's only got a handful and he spreads them out to you, Curtis. Here you are. Thank you. And uh, you take Where it, do you travel? Um, he points to the uh, card that uh, has been handed to you and uh, mm. you realize that this is uh, basically a, an address of where he's moving to. Cool. Um, it's still going to be called uh, the Silver Serpent, uh, but it's in Ironheart. Um, and, you know, it gives the location how to get there. And there's a coupon for uh, something like <laughs> redeemable for like a drink at the bar, a smoke in the lounge, a free lap dance, something. Cool. Have a, right, awesome. a thing. Yeah. And uh, he Thanks. nods to you and. <laughs> and then my tongue comes out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll let it put that know. back in there. <laughs> Is it like detachable now? Is that what's happened? <laughs> I'm I'm going to say that this might be sort of more, instead of it just instantaneously happening, I'm going to say that probably going to be like almost like a disease that's going to cause oh. like two floss and oh great like, yeah good that's good <laughs> where'd you pick that one up disease. you ate, you ate yeah. some bad you ate some bad cow <laughs> who have i yeah, what, the, uh, what is wrong with you what is um, wrong with me my whole face is fucked <laughs> <laughs> however um curse is roguish good lucks uh, uh my my weapon, yeah, is the ice pick is the primary one. What uh, what damage does it do? Uh, let's go look, shall we? Uh, that is a D four plus four. Sorry, D eight okay. plus four. I can't fucking read. D, D, yeah, yeah D eight plus four. So on your crit damage uh, to encompass the fact that it's got the uh, extra teeth in it, uh, double your crit damage. So add another Dope. dice to your crit damage pool, which will be. Nice and serrated and pretty, awesome. pretty gnarly. Press um, okay. Well, my teeth yeah. are going to the, the <laughs> ice pick. <laughs> You're just like taking them out one at a time and like <laughs> attaching them. As... Put that on there. Yeah. <laughs> Save that for later. So, <laughs> Ali uh, looks fondly to all of you and uh, says his goodbyes. Um, he leaves behind uh, a few bits and pieces that just like he's run out of room for. Um, sure. which is, you know, uh, he leaves a couple of like half drunk bottles of wine that won't last the journey and, uh, a few half smoked, uh, packets of what looks like almost like shisha sticks, like death sticks, uh, that he previously sold to Sarah. And yeah, he just, uh, he leaves pretty much that and some half eaten food and he leaves. And that is, uh, that is that. There's... You find yourselves in pretty much a ghost town. You know, there's a few people still living around here, these parts who uh, have decided not to up and leave. But so far as the population goes, you guys are about as extraordinary as it gets. Uh, other than the pixies, which you notice that the pixies themselves also seem to be, or the fairies seem to be packing up as well um, and departing. But it's getting late, and uh, Artie's been packing all day, and as he leaves, sun setting, uh, you guys have had a bit of an ordeal today. Um, what's the plan for sort of accommodation while you're here? I'll make it clear, you don't have to stay in the brothel you can go explore, find your own home, because a lot of people have just up and left. Um, what's the plan for like the first night? I think I'm going to get uh, more familiar with the uh, serpent and uh, just take a look around, see what uh, skeletons are in the closet, that kind of thing. Okay. You all going to yeah. crash here tonight? I think for tonight, yeah. Yeah. I okay. think uh, after Explore uh, around a little. Calvin might go move into the, um, the, the, the inn in the tree. Uh, Later, take over that. <laughs> I think the Sarah would be pretty bent on like exploring. Okay, well, 
As you guys get some rest, Lucy, you have a dream. You have a very odd dream. Of course. As you're having your dream, um, you get this... You remember that sensation of uh, the flight, the uh, soaring above the forest? You have that kind of moment where you can't remember what you were dreaming about, but you wake up feeling like you fell from a great height, and you sort of flash back to sweat and everything like that, and then you realize that the floor is rumbling. Um, you guys are upstairs in what was Artie's private quarters. Um, spacious, takes up almost a floor plan of sort of the main area of the tavern. Um, there's uh, plenty of room to sort of sleep. A couple of the bits of furniture, like his desk, uh, are still there because it's sort of part of the wall. Uh, and there's like a chest against the wall, which is empty. Um, but there's no bed. Uh, there's a bed frame, big four poster thing. So you guys can make yourself comfortable, lock the door, you know, keep the wind off your back. Um, but you guys are awoken by the sound of rumbling. Uh, Lucy, you're the first to awaken. You have this sick sort of lurch and um yeah the floor is shaking dramatically underneath you okay what is that i'll uh she'll go run and uh look to find the others if did we scatter to separate rooms or we're all in the one I'm, same spot i would assume we'd take our own rooms uh we haven't actually slept here before right it is but a it's a brothel so i assume there's it, plenty it, of it's, rooms it's, it's got rooms, but that you are literally going to be walking into sort of like a box room. They almost now there's nothing in them. They look like very well painted storage cupboards. Um, one or two of them that have uh, uh, one way one way one way mirrors in them. Um, but other than that, there's not really. And those rooms don't have doors on. They've got curtains that hang across that are missing. Yeah, so Lucy will uh, dash around and try to find the others and wake them up. Everyone, something's um, happening. Something's going on. We should That's get down the As this happens, Lucy, give me a uh, perception check. Sure. On eleven, well, that was garbage. <laughs> you you feel sick, essentially, as you get nauseous, cool. kind of as you're running around. Uh, but it slowly, by the time you've rounded the party together, and sort of you're all standing uh, almost in the bar area, um, the rumbling has stopped. <sighs> that was weird. Should we go outside and look at what happened? Uh, yeah. That's weird. Carefully, carefully and cautiously, I think. Okay. Leads. She'll grab her staff and step outside to have a look around. Give me a deck oh, save. Oh, what's it? A deck save, Lucy. Oh, boy. Lucy. Cool. Oh, boy. I am the best at decks. <laughs> 16? Um, Ignore that, sorry. That was just me throwing into my tray accidentally. Ah, oh, that's cool. Uh, on a 16, um, you uh, narrowly avoid uh, falling to your death. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, like, if I see that she's like about to fall off, I'm going to like... Yeah. Uh, uh, Grab her, like you know, by, by the back, and sort of yeah. like pull her backwards. Ah, oh. oh. uh, what the hell? What in the world? You are a hundred feet in the air. Um. Excuse as me. You know any <laughs> reason why? <laughs> as you near out, you look down. There is a absolutely huge birch tree that is what? currently underneath the tavern. <sighs> well then. But as That's you watch, 
It's not come through the tavern, smashed a big hole. And as you look, the branches look like they're swaying for a moment, but you realize that finally they come to a rest and seem to groan to a halt. And they form almost a lattice of steps that seem to spiral down. You can get in and out of this. It's like the end of the last home. (laughs) Sorry. Um, well, that's helpful, I suppose, if we get another flood. Ah, I guess that's helpful. I didn't do this. Putting that out there, this is not my fault. It's okay. Ah, uh, Sarah and Calvin here as well. Yeah, you guys have all kind of been. Okay. I don't know about Calvin you, but Calvin is just staring <laughs> at Lucy. Calvin, it's not me. I think. Sarah, what? Um, what do you have to say? It, I. It has to be you. It has to be, doesn't it? Well, I'm not doing it on purpose. I don't... I don't know. Oh, then she thinks for a moment. Oh dear. What was that dream about? You suddenly remember something about birch trees. <laughs> of course I do. Specifically, silver trees. <sighs> You remember because your mind kind of wandered from where you fell asleep, silver serpent, to silver tree, sort of that kind of almost like a long snake uh, of silver that slowly, like, you notice its texture change to a branch and then sprouted out into a tree as if you were sort of without, you know how your mind kind of follows strange erratic stories sometimes? Sure, sure. Oh, well then, I really should just, maybe I should just not sleep anymore. Uh, <sighs> if, if this is going to happen every time you sleep, I think we're going to need to get some some of Calvin's famous coffee. Yes, um, I am going to need to figure this out, I think. Uh, okay, um, is there something we can help you with regarding that? I, you know, maybe I should just go take a walk outside and do some Maybe thinking. just clear your head a little. Um, yeah, yes. Yeah, you you do that. Um, I'll um, I'll be back. Okay. But then when she goes, I turn to Sarah and Calvin. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> this is kind of crazy. <laughs> You think? Is it really though? I mean, she went to sleep and now we're a hundred feet in the air. Well, is it really that crazy? It seems to happen every few months. I think it'd be crazy to not expect it at this point. <laughs> Maybe. Basically, whenever she uh Fine. <laughs> Yeah. Y'all. Yeah. Well, I, we'll all just, I know is we better not. We, we're gonna, if we're gonna just ruin taverns wherever we go. <laughs> Do you think she's got some kind of vendetta against taverns that we don't know about? I mean, this has happened twice now. Lucy, like a taverns, I don't killer. know. Hmm. Lucy, as you're making your way out and you sort of step out and onto the uh, platform, um. Conversations happening behind you. You're a little distracted and don't overhear this. As you notice that there sure. is something uh, else attached to uh, the tavern. There is a house. Okay. It's not a big house, but it is uh, a house. And uh, it's one story, uh, except it's not on the floor. Um, it is attached by a long, what looks to be... Uh, two pieces of rope that would have stakes through them that was probably like a little rope picket fence um but is now anchoring it 
stopping it from floating away. Um, you look. It looks like if you were to sort of adjust it slightly, you'd have almost a rope bridge that leads across to a floating house uh, that could probably uh, accommodate a, a small family. As uh, okay, there you go, Will. You have a house now that yeah. is trying desperately <laughs> to float towards the ocean. In the oh, that's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, just go right in there. It'll be fine. Be sure to take uh, Lucy with you. Yeah, let's. Oh God, sail no! Away. Let's not let. let let's <laughs> not involve water. <laughs> Trees let's are bad sail enough. Away from into the sea. <laughs> sail away with me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> the boathouse. Oh, it's fine. As my tongue flows uh, out and all of my teeth just come retire with oh. me away on the floating house in the ocean. It's got a romantic. Dude, you're gonna totally be like. Oh. That oh, guy that you see down at the docks, the old man with no teeth, <laughs> sort of gibbering. The guy who can do the gurning face really well, just that kind of really. Oh my lord! Yeah, <laughs> I've been sailing in these waters for fifty years. <laughs> yeah, um, he's like he can t- like Curtis can tell you like a rumor about the Black Pearl that will totally come true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah. Got this process. Yeah, while she's out this. and about, yeah, I say while she's out and about, more than likely, uh, if it hasn't happened yet, Lucy's gonna go just take care of that that deer hunting business. Yeah. So we're gonna start off with the first sort of opening week and see. Uh, you guys have got some time. At the moment, there is no pressing um, drama going on. Um, you know that uh, the pixies that were, or the fairies that were running the brothel, um, that were sort of in the process of slowly winding their business down and feel like that, pack up and leave in a day. Because they have a tree that runs through their tavern. You have a tree that is actually like supported beautifully by the branches of tavern, has a staircase that leads up to it, an anchored house, uh, and is just of nicer quality. Um, and they, they decide they're not going to try and compete for a month uh, before the army arrives they just they pack up they're gone um but you find yourself with uh some free time and the ability to sort of explore so we're going to go around and see what everyone does uh during that time so we'll start with lucy you wanted to uh, go and do your deer hunting yep gotta get that out of the way sooner or later Indeed. Thinking Maybe. logically that it, it, it may help get a handle on this weird druidic nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Hunt deer, stop making trees. Makes sense. Maybe. Damn it, Lucy. Hunt, Try anything hunt at this deer point. Appear, appear, stop appear making chat. trees. <laughs> stop making trees. <laughs> just just stop. Yeah. You um you can absolutely go out on a hunt, so uh, do you go alone, or do you take anyone with you, or is it just sort of try and... Uh, she'll chance that one alone. The The indication, uh, it, it seemed that the indication was that it had to be her, and it had to not be via any means other than the dagger, so... Rather mm. than have others around that could inadvertently slay the deer and mm. lead to more of them dying, she just wants to go and get it out of the way. Okay. So... You find your way out into uh, the sticks, which isn't far, as this is um, <coughs> dramatically smaller. Um, the capital of Rivercroft has shrunk uh, quite noticeably since last you were here, as all of the tents, all of the, like, the, the festival stuff is pretty much gone. There's uh, still a few people packing up, closing down shops, uh, like having fire sales and getting rid of the last of their stock. But... Um, Pretty easily, you find yourself out in the hills, rolling plains, um, away from it all, uh, on not the most well-traveled of roads, and you spot that there is a river that runs sort of snaking through that's mostly, you know, its banks have broken months ago, so it's pretty wide and pretty uh, sort of gushing, but you know that you're going to be looking at... uh, the high ground you're going to be looking across the hilltops and stuff like that because 
if you get down too low in some of these valleys, like it's just thick mud, uh, and you know, most wildlife is going to try and avoid it because they'll get bogged down. They can't move fast from predators and stuff like that. But that means that they're probably going to be visible for quite some way away. That being said, uh, roll me in that one in perception check. I dare you. <laughs> okay. Sure, why not? I have faith in you, Lucy. <laughs> All right. Let's so see if you're here. Maybe you use one of her donated nat ones then. I mean, I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a chance for the beginning of All this. All right. We'll, we'll try. Uh, not in that one though. Okay. Uh. Okay. Sorry, I'm just responding to someone. Uh, so, as you... Secret uh, messages, I see. Yeah, all, all the secret messages. I get so secret, many secret, secrets. So many secrets. <laughs> Chai, Chai, you guys. Um, yeah, no, on a, on a 12, it takes you some time. Like, uh, you're out for a little while. You have a few non-starters. Um, you see things you think in the distance uh, might be sort of uh, deer resting on hilltops, but as you get closer, it's, uh, you know, you find a rock, you find a fox, you find uh, a few <laughs> other bits. Literally um, anything but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you find everything but. Um, it's almost like a, you know, spot the person or spot the difference, and yeah, it's just yeah. a load of red herrings thrown in for you. Um, but finally... Closer um, wolf, wolf, that's a wolf! <laughs> yeah, you uh, you get uh, you've been traveling for quite some time. And you've been lost in your thoughts as uh, you know a lot's happened to Lucy in the last few days, few weeks, and almost out of the blue, without warning, you realize that you're wandering without really keeping track of time, and suddenly something appears um, in front of you it's a little ways away it's stopped by a river it is not alone uh there is two large deers and what looks to be a fowl um just a small uh is it a fowl no it's a doe isn't it little baby a baby uh, fawn? It's two a fawn. Big deers. Fawn. that's it yeah <laughs> literally just escaped me entirely so there are two uh two large deers um one is a stag and uh there is a fawn um that is nestled between them uh and they are drinking from the banks of the river and oh they, they they just they see you staring at them and they swipe viciously at your desk just knocking shit everywhere <laughs> uh, they sure they do. Know, yeah. and as as they do this <laughs> the fawn escapes yeah Tactics. Yep. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> All is good now. Um, so, you're making me attack Bambi and his family. Thank you. That's great. Um, yeah. Well. But you try and fight the stag, which is probably the toughest. You can try and kill the baby, which is sick and immoral. Or you can be the person who kills <laughs> Bambi's mum. It's up to you. Awesome! These are the <laughs> tough choices I play D and D for. <laughs> uh, she's going to go after the stag. Um, of course. Figuring. The only one that can defend them in the wild. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. It's just fair's fair. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you kill the stag, then someone else can like pick off the two weaker ones and tear them. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. yeah I'll feel less bad about that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um. But rather than just uh, run up and try to swipe at it with the dagger, uh, I think she's going to try to snare it uh, with a web spell. Okay. Uh, is it an attack roll or is it a save for the, the deer? Uh, it is. It needs it to... I think it's a save. Where is it? Start a, uh, a deck save. It needs deck to make save. a deck save. Can yeah. do. Uh, it's gonna roll. Uh, does a 
ferocious six save against Oof. your spell save. No, I don't think so. <laughs> cool. So you, uh, how, what, what kind of form does your web take? Um, in this case, she's kind of trying to lay it like a trap. So, uh, sort of aims it down at the at the feet of the uh, creature, and it just kind of <laughs> splashes down and tries to snare. Uh, some of the vo- some of the webs will reach up and try mm. to snare about its legs to so hold it in it's place. Le- it's leaning down to drink. You actually catch one of its huge antlers as well as it's just on the bank of the river, and it tries to lift itself up and jerks awkwardly, turning to try and sort of see who it's attacking. Uh, the fawn panics, absolute sheer terror, doesn't know what to do, um, and gets behind its mother, who sees you, um, and uh, basically just sort of butts into um, the stag, trying to free him. But it looks to no avail, and you have a moment uh, to make some progress. What are you doing? Yep. Uh, she's going to also throw a cantrip of dancing lights to kind of just try and like flash lights at the uh, fawn and the doe to scare them off before okay. going in toward the stag with the dagger. Fantastic. Uh, on a whistling saving throw of a three, um, they, you guessed it, do nothing. They stand like a deer in headlights as you flash bright lights in their face <laughs> and do absolutely nothing to try and flee. They just, cool. they just don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. They tour school. It's, right a phrase. it's a phrase for yeah, a yeah. reason. It is, it is literally <laughs> a thing that is known. Cool. Um, yeah, w- well, they're not moving at least. They're not getting in the way, so she's going to go in and try to um, just cut the stag open uh, in the neck and just try to kill it quickly. Okay. Probably having only the vaguest idea of where to strike. Because she's not a hunter. (laughs) No, 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 that's no problem. Uh, Right, make me me an attack roll. Actually, you know what? This is is kind of an important one, so I'm going to say roll me a d2, because I want to see if it's a nat 1 or a nat 20. You've got some in the bank. Okay. Let's see your first tribal kill. Let's get some of these uh, flowing. All right. It's a two. That works. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Lucy, you come up. You're blind. You have no idea where you're going for. Um, The blade, (laughs) it's not the... It's quite long, uh, but it's not. It's only a dagger at the end of the day. Uh, It's got a vicious edge to it, but you reach in... And you sort of grab it and narrowly avoiding it, bringing its antlers around. It can't quite move them around. And you drive it in just behind the shoulder, uh, just as hard as you can, almost falling into it. And the second you do that, it stiffens for a moment and it lets out a noise that is too high pitched to be anything that you've ever heard from. A deer. It's just suddenly it like a squeal, and then it begins to kill over. And for a second, like you think it's going to fall on you, but it's almost anchored upright because its antlers are caught in your web, uh, and it just goes down flat on its legs uh, and stops moving entirely. Doesn't seem to suffer in the slightest. It's a beautifully clean kill, and as it drops down this huge creature that you know almost towers over you almost the size of a horse this is a big a big old elf you brought down um you look up and you notice that the fawn and the mother have taken off at speed um and you have your first kill and the second you do you feel your magic awaken almost and it seems to flow from the dagger as if coming straight from you and for a moment give me a a, a nature or an arcana check and this is up to you how you 
think Lucy would react? Would she react practically okay. or would she react spiritually? It's up to you. <laughs> practically, always. Okay. Nat 20 on the Arcana check. Nat 20? Oh, damn. Oh, damn. On a nat, on a nat 20, you realize that you have passed a test and that whatever was... Uh, whatever happened to you while you were on your, your quest, whatever has been awoken with you, was almost um, was almost locked uh, away and you've unlocked some of it. And as you do, this will now give you your ability to wild shape, as you have the ability now to wild shape. And this is something that is going to be a very interesting thing for you to do for the first time ever. Uh, when you want to do it is is up to you. But uh, <laughs> you suddenly have this surge of energy, and it's completely different to uh, to the arcane which you're used to, which is very clinical. It's very scientific. The sensation you get it's chaotic. It's mad. It's wild, and it almost you feel it moving through the grass you feel it in the dirt that you stand upon for a split second you almost feel entwined with every beast every creature critter uh, that forms the land that surrounds you and you have this real keen understanding that you can draw power from pretty much anywhere not just sort of like you know places of magical significance like the Anything that is natural in this world, you can draw energy from, and that's something you can tap into. It's a big, sort of overwhelming sensation. Yeah, uh, for someone being very used to, you know, practical magical theory and uh, studying that extensively and learning how to work with that, uh, she just kind of stands there for a long moment. Um, was just sort of listening, feeling, taking it in, feeling the breeze, the temperature, hearing the wind that moves. And then she'll kind of lean down, uh, crouch down alongside the creature with the web spell having faded away and um, just kind of gently stroke the fallen stag. Thank you. I'm sorry. And never again. And she'll stand, brush off a little bit, and kind of orient herself, or try to, and uh, turn to make her way back. You turn to see that you are no longer alone. You stand next to your stag, who looks down, and it looks up, and there's no judgment in its eyes whatsoever. There's just... <laughs> complete understanding and respect. Tried to make it quick. Painless, I suppose. Hmm. Shall we and go back? It looks at you curious and looks at the, the carcass and you get the sense that it's not ready to leave yet. Mm. There's something more I've got to do. She'll kind of think for a moment and um, remember the uh, the others in that clan each had some sign of their uh, relevant clan. Indeed. Give me give me a history check just to see because you also knew something about the forest. You before you went in, you were one of the people who actually knew a bit going in. You've been paying attention. So. E. Damn. Okay. On a twenty. Damn. D some solid rolls. She I'm knows things. I'm surprised. <laughs> she knows things maybe, about maybe things. She just can't do things. <laughs> I think. I think we found what it is. She's just got to get instead of nat oneing all system. Uh, if you let her just destroy a tavern at the beginning of an episode, uh, Lucy's actually pretty good. <laughs> uh, but she's got to kind of get something out of her system. You're like. <laughs> There's also a wild that, magic that, surge. That chaos tree. 
Oh no. Yeah, well, I'm looking for Lucy and the stag here from Windflora. Okay. Oh, Why are you all hating on stag friend? <laughs> ah, who says it's hate? It could be well, good. It, it probably well, won't be, we'll but see. it could be good. It, it probably won't be, but it could be. We'll we'll hold out hope. <laughs> stag just trying to look it up there. Yeah. Stag just chilling, man. Stag's in a good yeah. time. Okay, this first one can be for Lucy. Uh, 947. Uh, you didn't just roll a 1 on a d10,000, did you? I sure as shit did. <laughs> Oh my fucking oh god. My god. That... Holy How? shit. That is... I've never seen that in all of my you years. You are the queen of you ones. Know. You're the queen of ones. You are crowned. Oh. It is official. Even like the D10,000, you... she rolls a nat one. <laughs> That's what? right. <laughs> What? I don't. Uh, how? how? I, I was like, no. no. Wow. She's like former. Is that, that a real that. roll or is that yeah. a, a yeah. fault? No, that's, a, that's a roll, Wait. dude. It, Why is it not in brackets? It, yeah, there's no brackets. Weird. That's the only thing I'm thinking. Is oh, there's okay. no bracket? Shall I try it again? I kind of uh, want it to. That, oh. <sighs> I don't know how you'd get that though, yeah. I don't know how you get yeah, that. I don't know yeah, why I did that. that. How would it get a one on that? I didn't see how it would be formatted wrong to just give you a one. I have no idea. So that looks different because there's like an equals. Yeah. Square brackets okay, versus square brackets. Yeah. Weird. I think the square brackets yeah. indicate. Oh man, I was. Whatever. Oh, I'll take a, a whichever. Difficulties. Right, we, can, we, can take the one. we can take the one if you want, Josh. I kind of want to see what it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I kind of want to see. I, I'm super I was going to say, with all about what she's rolled and the fact that it took us this long to not believe it. Yeah, I think, no, I'm, go I'm, for yeah. it. <laughs> I don't know if I want it. <laughs> Welcome to the curse. <laughs> so, oh, my God. So, Lucy's one is that she finds the wreckage of a seagoing vessel. In a nearby forest. My house, apparently, what? is in a nearby forest. The wreckage of a How seagoing he... vessel in a nearby because forest. It's already in the tree, right? She's in the forest, and there's my house. And oh, one okay. on the D10,000, dealer's choice. <laughs> one D10 um, of the stag's fingers turn to stone. So does that mean it would get like stone hooves? Because that's kind of boss. Stone hooves. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be incredible? Dude, it's a cool stag name, Stonehoof. Stonehoof, yeah. <laughs> that is a good name, actually. That's like, su dude, that's such a Dragonlance name. <laughs> we are to yeah. yeah, that really We're just is. turning into Dragonlance characters. <laughs> My floating okay. I'm not upset about that'd it. That'd be the best day ever. Yeah, I was gonna say that'd be the best day ever. Okay, so a seagoing vessel in a nearby forest, because sure, why the hell not? <laughs> Okay. Right as I found your house. <laughs> as you uh, you look around, um, yeah, you you have uh, on a twenty six pretty good knowledge. You have studied these people. You know two things. One, um, every clan member has a uh, token of their clan uh, animal, whatever their spirit animal is of their clan. So uh, for the wolf clan, they have a strip of wolf fur. Uh, uh, some of them, um, if they go bare chest, have wolf uh, teeth or claws around in a necklace, but mostly it's a strip of fur worn across your left shoulder. Um, same for feathers, uh, for birds and stuff like that. You are of the stag clan. You have a dead stag in front of you. It is something that is generally needed. Secondly, you made a kill. Um, you need a sacrifice to your to your spirit animal. And thirdly, uh, they do not waste from a kill. Okay. So, what does Lucy do with an entire stag so as not to be wasteful? Well, getting that back is going to be difficult. <clears throat> um, she's going to message somebody if that if she's close enough to do that how far do i need to be i think you're thinking of uh, sending yeah message is, message is you, too po close. you point to someone you can say yeah yeah uh well let's see do i have anything else for that um 
I'll try to drag it back, I guess. Uh, or cut it up. Huh? Work on cutting it up with no or yeah, clue I mean, of have, how to do have, any of this. You have a uh, you have a creature, a beast of burden, who's certainly strong enough to uh, to drag it, but you need something to drag it on. So uh, yeah. after having a bit of a look around, Lucy, you come across a hill kind of marking uh, by um, sort of a, a, a tree that is split down the middle, looking like it was struck by lightning or like a great axe has just carved it in two, split wildly. At the top of the hill, um, you see that, uh, you know, you've got a good vantage point of where it was um, that your kill is. And you go and have a look around. And you're starting to think maybe I'll need to use like a stone or um, like a flat stone or like, you know, maybe try and cut like a bark from a tree and make like a sled or something. And then you crest a hill. You're you're known further than sort of half a mile from where you made this kill, but it's so hilly, you know, you've had to really walk around. And you see something drift past in front of you. It's a flag. It's a, an odd angle, but there is a flag that uh, is just gently blowing with uh, the symbol of Rivercroft. What is that? It's just over the Take top a of the next look. hill. Yeah, just you, a jog to, to crest the hill and get a good look. You get over the top, and there is what appears to be the wreckage of a rather small military vessel. It is a small brig. Um, Looks like it suffered pretty heavy damage. Uh, It does appear to be sinking, and it's definitely not in the river anymore. It's now flowing through what was dead. Like, this river is on no map. This is just where it's, you know, filled a valley and is now flowing through. Um, But it uh has like broken bits of wood sort of all down it it looks like it was pretty badly damaged in a storm or maybe attacked you can't see any damage like scorch marks or arrows or blood but uh it does appear to be pretty uh unsailable but it does drift against the bank uh of the bottom of the hill you're standing atop and it just gouges uh, a, a trough into the dirt and comes to a grinding halt. Well, in flavors. She'll just go down and uh, see if she can salvage a piece of wood out of there that might be Absolutely. functional as a sled. Um, and you also take some rope. Yeah, there's tons of rigging. Like, you take some time, cut yourself like loads of lengths of rope, and then you come to, you're looking for something that's solid, um, you look at sort of the deck, it's splintered in places, but you're like trying to size it up and thinking, how am I going to break the, it apart? And then you hear something and there's like this tapping noise and you turn and you see that the door to probably the officer's quarters or the captain's quarters is just hanging loosely on one hinge. It keeps knocking into the, mm. into the door, uh, into the wall, sorry. And, uh, well, that might work. Uh, she'll look to the stag and, um, just see if it, did it stay on the bank or it, did it follow all the way through here? The stag is staring the at you from the top, the top of the hill. It's not come aboard, no, it hasn't got on, on deck, no. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been interesting. Alright, well, let's see. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Try to prize it off of there if it's uh, not too tough. She's not very strong, but she'll try to do it uh, with her own hands at first okay. to pull it away, pull it free. Give me a uh, give me an athletics. Sure. Just... Hmm. <laughs> what follows is a montage of. Lucy demonstrating uh, her absolute uh, inability to like you've got yeah. like there's like two screws but you just like yep. you try like unscrewing them with yep. the tip of your blade mm-hmm. and finally you just like 
pulling on it and then pushing on it. And at one point, you're you're, yeah. you're like just like a cat crouched on top of the door, just wrapped around yeah. it, trying to pull back. Yeah. Nothing is working at all. This probably door probably work. tried to run at it at least once, yeah. and that was a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> a little <Okay>. bruised. <sighs> Ouch. All right. Really shouldn't have done that. Uh, let's see. Magic, magic, magic. Anything? Um, well, she's going to take her staff and uh, going to try shillelagh and then batter the door with the staff instead. As you bring to the see staff if she in. Can get it off the hinges. You don't need to roll, there's no time restraint, uh, but it takes you like one swipe uh, to, to get it wedged in place. And first pull, nothing. Second pull, nothing. But it, you hear like that slight splitting sound. And the third pull, you pull yourself back as hard as you can and nearly go overboard, like hitting your small of your back against the railing as the door <sighs> shears clean and lands cracking into the uh, the edge of the ship next to you. That's going to smart. <clears throat> All right. <sighs> and she's just going to sit there for a few minutes to rest mm. before she goes back at the work of uh, getting it off. Um, you... Although before she leaves the ship, I'm going to take mm. a look inside and see if there's any logs or anything that look of interest. Absolutely. That may have investigate. any information the ship was. Of course. Uh, sure. On a 13, most of what you find is waterlogged and damaged. Um, you do find uh, what appears to be sort of like some silverware, uh, a few bits and pieces, uh, sort of... Um, Almost like, yeah, like a nice set of like wine goblets of like eight wine goblets that probably went with this very nice table, which is completely tipped over and like looks like it started to sort of rot and take damage in place. Um, but yeah, the silverware seems to be in bad need of a scrubbing. But you do have a tavern and uh, you don't have a lot of stuff to go in it. And looking around, there's no, no glassware or anything that survived but you find some like knives and forks and uh, you know a bottle opener and bits and pieces and you're like okay this could be a you know a couple of couple of pewter bowls worth taking and, back yeah you find a few bits and pieces and as you as you're here and you're doing a bit of salvage why not um sure with trash picking it's fine <laughs> um yeah, yeah she'll gather that up um and stow that away in her bag and then get back to work transporting the door and trying to fashion some sort of sled that she can fashion and uh yeah it takes, it takes you a little stag a little while but you manage to uh there's like cracks in the door and you manage to it's not perfect it's not a particularly fine ship you manage to get rope through and it's you know it's made of hardened uh seasoned oak so um you know you get uh through the holes um tie the knots off and attach what is probably kind of uncomfortable for uh for your stag but uh you attach um this sled and it just pulls it off the side of the boat over the edge into the water out of the water up the hill down the hill all the way um and finally you manage to get back to your deer lash it on and begin your long uh trip home and this is taken like 12 hours. hours maybe like it's like a whole day has gone past you know you were yeah. starting to worry you weren't going to get there then you got there then you had salvage and fight yeah so it's it's a whole ordeal by the time you get back she's gone for a day <laughs> yeah and uh upon returning we'll see what she finds as uh i'm gonna cut now to a dear friend calvin calvin how you doing bud Calvin's moving the fuck out. <laughs> he's like, he is, uh, he, he's like, and also to play a little bit on my wild magic surge from episodes and episodes ago where I want to kill Lucy because I think that she's basically 
either purposely or inadvertently trying to kill us. Um, he's just like, I'm done with this shit. Mama didn't raise no fool. I'm getting out of here. And uh, so uh, he goes uh, back to, you know, sort of over to the old inn, the old drowned uh, drowned inn, which then became fairy brothel. Mm. And uh, I think a little bit on his mind, uh, trying to, uh, with a tree going through it. I mean, he's, he's a little enamored. Uh, still with his druid, uh, his druid uh, Last girlfriend uh, or not girlfriend or whatever she is, and uh, so uh, yeah, he uh, just sort of you know climbs this, climbs the tree uh, to get up into this uh, uh, old uh, tavern, come brothel, come tree house, tree tavern, and. Uh, is just decided, you know what? Yo, know, I was always going to retire and own a tavern, and I'm not staying with that crazy magic wildness that's going on over there. They can just have it. I'm going to fix this place up, and I am making myself my own place. Calvin is starting the competition. Okay. Tavern this Wars? Place, this place has <laughs> been renamed. Uh, the Drunk Man's Refuge from the Drowned Man's Refuge. Um, and it's been spruced up somewhat. Uh, when you get over there, the fairies haven't uh, entirely moved out yet, um, but uh, they're sort of standing around uh, or flitting around trying to figure out... Um, I start reciting... Know. I start reciting dark poetry to get them get them out i start uh just doing my most depressing uh depressing songs and uh emo poetry i can to get them to hurry their way along okay are you trying to are you trying to score anything am i trying to what you trying to score anything as they're uh, they're packing up? Well, I figure in a quick, that if I can get them to whatever they leave behind, I mean, I know ma- fairies are magical; they might leave some magic shit behind. So I figure the quicker I get um, old uh, the the fairies and is uh, not sugarcock um, angel. What's cock. his name? Huh? Angel cock. Uh, is sooner I can get angel cock and the rest of the fairies out of there. I can uh, start uh, turning this into my place. Um, and uh, so, uh, ooh, I know what I'll do. Uh, so he begins to uh, do sort of a recitation song uh, and uh, goes, hold on a thing. please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. I've been around for a long, long march, stole a pious, pious man's soul and faith. Oh, God. And I was around when Miss Vandry fell, had her moment of doubt and pain. <gasps> Made damn sure that Gavin obeyed, washed his hands, and sealed her fate. Pleased oh, to God. meet you. Hope you can guess my name. But what's puzzling you, of course, is the nature of my game. I stuck around the underdark when I saw it was time for a change. I killed the brain and his ministries, watched as Kazna screamed in vain. I rode a demon, held a a general's rank, when the five raged and the body stank. Pleased to meet you. Hope you can guess my name. And goes on and on. What's puzzling you is the nature of my game. Give me a performance check at advantage. Holy shit, that was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. That was the song about but also I hate you. It was amazing, but also I hate you. I hate you. Oh, actually, I'm I still had more. Oh, yeah, I still have one more thing. I, I thought I had finished. Anyway, I'm 
Yeah, I, I want to hear. I want to hear the last verse. So yeah, what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. I watched with glee as your kings and queens fought for to ye- fought for ten years before the gods they made. Oh, and then I stopped. So I, that's why I didn't do it. That's why I put a line there. It's like, why did I put a line there when I've got more? No, that was it. Sorry. <laughs> oh, God. That, but an 18. Um, yeah. Oh, on an 18. Um, they, uh, you know, the 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 somber song just um, pushes you from, uh, or pushes them from their, their comfort zones you see the lights dim in here and things start to you notice that they stop working cohesively and start to just leave and like some of them are still trying to pack stuff up but you end up with uh some liquor uh not much at all like it's one good party is going to clean you out but uh you end up with some liquor um a little bit of food is left over um but also uh, they don't take like the curtains um there's uh, a few chairs and tables left um but there's no gold or anything like that and there isn't any magical items but it's you could do business right now without needing too much other than possibly to wipe every surface down with antiseptic just to be on the safe side well these damn fairies are out of here. And uh, so um, I say it's probably early morning um, and he can't eat. So he starts working on the tavern and just, I mean, every piece of lumber he has to, he has to, you know, carry it up the tree uh, with himself. You know, he's strapping stuff to his back. Everything is a climb up and down the tree there's there's a uh, there's a lift it's manual pull so it's going to sub there is a pulley system so it's not like you're not pulling the oh, full oh, weight that's even better so he's, yeah. is it, he stands on it he has to do hand over hand lifting himself ah. up dude that's great workout i actually have we have a machine like that at my gym and uh so yeah no he uh he is bound and determined uh as you were saying i think over the i mean this day one but yeah he's going to be working on this for you know and as long as he can he's going to sleep here he's uh you know uh whatever food he finds here go have to go out and snare and hunt it himself he uh catches eye of lucy uh and dragging a stag back he might go and uh play nice to get some uh get, get some uh food off of her since nothing can go to waste mm-hmm. and uh but yeah, no. Calvin is uh, pretty much uh, putting this t- putting this place together to make his own, uh, you know, a tavern to call his own. Okay. When you leave in the morning, before all of this takes place, do you say anything to Curtis? Or do you just well? Because no, Curtis no. sort of when she leaves, we uh, we were our last discussion was about the whole idea that she destroys taverns and. Calvin's just like, now, I've seen some magic. I've seen a lot of things. Hell, I can cast some magic. But that right there, that's uncontrolled, wild magic, crazy shit that follows that girl around. I said, I'll put in, raise no fool. I'm out of here. Next time, it's going to be one of us inside a tree, up a well, upside down flying through the air dropping a thousand bazillion feet i'm out i'm out i'm telling you i'm out i'm done all right i'll be i'll be next door (laughs) you know fix that place up kick those damn fairies out of there and uh you come get me and uh i i mean you no ill I mean, none of the party in ill. When y'all need me, I'll be there. I will. I will. I'll be there with the dust, y'all. But I ain't sleeping on the same roof with that girl. <laughs> All right. That's she bad. sleeps and wild shit goes down. Okay. It's not and with that, yeah. With that, Calvin takes off. Uh, what does Curtis do with the rest of his first day? Uh, Curtis, um, 
you know, takes a look around the uh, the shop to find all, where all the skeletons are in a closet, and then he's probably going to head to the castle, which is now abandoned as far as he knows, and he's going to take a look around, specifically in Stavros's room, to see what's been left in there, and basically to see yeah, everything else. Okay. I presume you're leaving pretty early, you know, straight after the conversation, you make your... Pretty much, I'm going to head off. Yeah. Okay. As you head up towards the uh, castle, um, it's odd, because you're walking towards a, uh, a lowered, uh, a raised portcullis, a lowered drawbridge. Uh, there's, you know, the moat that goes round. It's uh, a, a courtyard that has a few wagons left in it, but it is empty, deserted. There are still some torches that burn very low, um, as if, you know, they, they were lit and forgotten all about. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, obviously, you know, because, you know, this could potentially be a dungeon and there will always be lighting because someone goes around and lights all the candles and everything like that. So, so I've learned. Um, you know, you, you come in, you see that, you know, it's not been deserted for long at all, but you are not opposed by anyone. There are no guards, there are no soldiers, there's no servants or locals that have come to claim it. It is just empty as you step into this courtyard. Um, so you're heading towards Stavros's private room? I am. I'm going to uh, spook my way around here, so I'm probably going quite stealthily, despite the fact that presumably no one's here. Yeah, give me a uh, stealth check as you head your way around. Okay. My stealth? My stealth? Yes. <laughs> Give me show my nice screen for stuff. 16. 16 on the stealth. Mm. One off the perfect number. So you um, make your way round, and it takes you a little time um, to uh, sort of find your way back where you were going. And as you're going around on a 16, you um, you realize that there is quite a lot of, of sort of flotsam and jetsam debris that's been left scattered around this place um, mm-hmm. as people have left in a bit of a hurry. Um, but uh, most of the rooms are empty. It's mostly in the corridors that bits, you know, bits of paper that are blank or that just have sort of um you know grocery lists and you know stock lists and stuff like that have just been come come free but uh as you make your way around you come to a corner and freeze as you hear uh what sounds like footsteps uh moving not quite as quietly as you pretty quietly Mm. you can tell um that they're you know not advertising that they're here but they are people who have already moved in, uh, probably investigating, pillaging, ransacking the place as much as they can. Um, do you have any interest in sort of uh, who these people I, I are? Definitely know who these, your... Yeah, I definitely want to know who, uh, who these people are. So I'm going to sneak closer to where I hear the footsteps, and I'm going to uh, slowly draw out my uh, blowgun, um, which is... Uh, loaded not with wood a, anymore. Like a not wood anymore. It's like is bamboo wood? I don't know. Yeah, bamboo uh, wood, but it could be like a pipe. It could be a metal pipe, like a pipe, it's not metal bladed. pipe. Yeah. It could be a metal, metal pipe. Let's say that I've been I've been modding it away from uh, yeah. <laughs> the wood into fucking metal, so I can do something. Yeah, it's uh, it's because it's been raining so much. It's just easier, you know. It doesn't, it doesn't get sure. damaged so easily. Yeah. That's it. That's totally why. Um, you uh, you can make your way along, um, and uh, you spot that these guys uh, on your pass, your sixteen stealth. These guys are um, they've got some stuff sort of uh, piled together, um, but they haven't made their way out into the courtyard. They appear to be sort of storing it in one of the rooms that's just off from the courtyard, uh, gathering together, and they're looking around. Um, they have weapons. Um, only one of them is well armed. He has a long sword. Um, 
it quite clearly doesn't belong to him. He doesn't have the sheath to go with it. He just has a long sword, um, and he's leaning on it. He's got sort of like he keeps tapping the floor with it as if to emphasize his point quietly, uh, sort of into the dirt. Um, and uh, you know he's doing lots of things that is probably going to scuff the blade up, leaning on it. Also, doesn't look like he can sort of when he moves it around. He's clumsy. These guys look like they're local villagers who are just never set foot in the castle before in their entire life and have decided, fuck it, all the nobles have left, we're going to take everything that isn't nailed down. Understood. And how many of them do you say there were? Uh, there appears to be five or six of them um, that are sort of moving around. It's hard to keep track of their numbers because they're not... They're, like, there's three of them who are staying in this corridor. Um, one of them's leaning on... Uh, the, the sword and seems to be sort of like come on uh he, he looks more nervous than sort of like a try like you know a bandit right. leader who's ordering the men he looks worried um, opportunists yeah yeah absolutely scavengers you know mm -hmm. hmm. well i'm gonna leave them alone if possible and let them do their mm -hmm. looting because it's no uh, use to me as long as they're not like in stavros's room um, no, they're nowhere near. Like okay. they, they've come in and they're looting. Like they're probably going to start making their way out that way. But Stavros's room yep. is towards sort of uh, away from the main courtyard. So yeah, you can wanna, easily work around them. Yeah, I want to slip like a ghost uh, up the steps towards Stavros's room. Okay. As you, um, I tell you what I'm looking for as well. I'm looking for files on Duran, <laughs> and I'm looking for anything that Stavros left behind. I yeah, want, like, sure. his record if it's still around, you know, like, his, yeah. his like, uh, uh, record at this company, um, see if he's had any incidents. Okay, you, uh, you come into the room, the first thing that hits you is the smell of smoke, but it is not fresh, you're not hit in the face by smoke. Um, this room looks like it's been hit by a fire. Um, it looks like, you know, a fire has gutted it, except, um, Everything is piled into the center of the room. So uh, the table has been, uh, his desk has been like smashed up uh, and piled and like you can see it's like charred. Like if you breathe too strongly, that you know, what's left of it will probably right. fall apart. There are stacks of papers that are just burnt beyond recognition. But whoever did this, did this in a fucking hurry. And you note that, you know, there's the corner of a bit of paper that hasn't quite burnt away there. There's a bit there, there's... You know, bits and pieces around. So, give me a give me an investigation as you sort of come into the room mm. for the first time. Yeah, I'm gonna try and do this you know, as quietly as I can. Um, it's a sixteen on the die. On a sixteen, first thing you notice as you're looking around, the door has been busted open. Uh, the door was bolted. You can see that there were three bolts. Um, okay. All of them have basically bro broken away from the wall, uh, and uh, one of the bolts is still like lodged where it was fixed in the wall. They are reinforced steel um, set into concrete by heavy bolts. Like this is not a door that moved easy. Um, the door itself has been reinforced. Whoever came in here did not do it quietly or instantly. Like this door probably had to be battered down over. A, Min a series of minutes um, and by probably a, a group of individuals. That's the first thing that's odd. Okay. Second thing that you realize is that means it was locked from the inside. Um, right. Now, it is claimed that Stavros vanished. Um, there's no right. windows in here. So you look around and like you, you case the place. You spend time you don't need to worry about sort of, you know, yeah, you know, someone breathing down your neck. You're not under time constraints. You case this place good. You find no trace of any secret passageways in or out. Um, but getting in here is, means going up a staircase that was always guarded by sort of elite guards. So, and it's in a tower with no windows. So, I right. mean, he was well protected, but there's no other way out of this room you can find. Hmm. Interesting. And are there any um, 
I, I guess there's, I assume there's some kind of magic going on in that case. Um, are there any files in this room um, that have not been burnt away? Uh, or does it look like most of them have been destroyed in the fire? Looks like most of them have been destroyed, but spend a little time okay. going through. You find uh, a few scraps, oh. you sort of root through the fire bits that, you know, miraculously have survived somehow. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you piece together a few bits and pieces. Um, are you looking for anything specific? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm looking for files on Duran. <laughs> Okay, um, you do find uh, one or two uh, mentionings of his name. Most of them seem to be people that have been sent to him um, for interrogation. Uh, it's explicitly, you know, it's intimidate, right. interrogate, uh, and some of them say, like, mutilate, but there's only, like, one instance where it actually says okay. kill them, uh, if necessary. So you find stuff like that other than that there is a note um that actually uh says uh regards duran um and the last word that the only word that is on mm. the page because the top bit of it is just burnt away just says forgiveness everything else is completely burnt to cinders okay i I will take that um, as the only evidence that I can find on him. Mm. And uh, I think I'll probably leave then, having having discovered everything okay. I think I'm going to around here. Uh, assuming that he's left via magic somehow, if he is still alive. Mm -hmm. um, expect well. I mean, I think Curtis is making the connection where if it's Breckendale who have got mages on their side, it's and uh, Stavros is working with them. It's not a million miles away to suspect that maybe they vanished him out of there with magic. Uh, so I'm not going to find anything else here. Um, I take the files and I slip past the... I'm going to try and slip past the looters again. Before you uh, head off, give mm. me uh, 1d2. We're going to see. Oh boy. It's going to come down to what, either a nat 20 or a nat 1. And we're gonna... It is a natural 1. Natural 1. Okay. You make your way out. Uh, on the way out, you are spotted. Uh, you, you come out sort of down the stairs um, and you make your way through, avoiding where you uh, last heard them. But you come around the corner and you can hear them still like cluttering and being noisy and everything like that. Mm. Uh, they are being their equivalent of quiet, but to you, they are making like it might as well be a marching band. Uh, and you easily avoid them and then suddenly come around the corner and you are confronted by a woman who is standing, she has a crossbow in one hand. It's not loaded, uh, but she has a crossbow in one hand with uh, what looked like three quivers hanging from sort of a string around her. Um, and she has a huge sack over her shoulder. And like, there's no way she could load the crossbow, but she, you see her suddenly look at you and raise the weapon, which is Entirely useless, no um, bolt in yeah. it, everything, but she looks terrified at you as you have quite a. You're an intimidating fella, and you're wearing some pretty official looking gear. <laughs> I look fucking terrifying, I'm sure, with most of my face falling apart. Uh, yeah. I probably look you a bit smile like a, um, one of your teeth falls out. Zombie, uh. uh excuse me, ma'am, I'm just moving through here. You don't intend to shoot me with that crossbow, do you? Not loaded. She looks at it, looks at you, looks kind of worried, and just slowly backs out, uh, sort of into like an adjacent corridor to let you pass. Uh, despite the fact that you pointed out that it's not loaded, she holds it aimed at you as if it gives her reassurance, but you can see her hand is shaking. She just sort of backs out. I, yeah, I kind of, like, back away from her as well and head out the door as we have this little standoff. Okay. And you can make your way uh, out of this place, and are you heading... You probably spent, you know, a couple of hours here, but... Uh... Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to head back to the uh, the tavern to see uh, what's uh, what's going down there. 
Okay. Um, you get back. It's quiet. Uh, Calvin, you will see, um, is in the process of moving stuff up and down from the tavern that's sort of uh, a few streets over down the main road uh, on the way into town. Um, you can see him sort of like, you know, shirt off, like what sweating as he's doing a lot of manual lifting uh, to and from, bringing stuff, uh, supplies up and down. Uh, and occasionally you'll see like just really terrible uh, bits of gaudy, you know, trinkets and bric-a-brac just being pushed off the balcony. Oh, yeah. Um, Throw that shit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, you see him doing sort of, you see like your neighbor doing renovations down the road on a, on a hot summer's day. Uh, there's no sign of Lucy um, and there's no sign of Sarah either. So you have the place to yourself. Um, it's quiet. Hmm. <laughs> Everyone's gone. Uh, well, I'm probably not upset by the fact that <laughs> I'm alone because <laughs> God, it's just forever alone. Uh, and instead, I will start uh, becoming a barkeep and perpetually cleaning the same glass over and over as I prepare for our visitors from Breckendale. Okay. And general so, like tavern management. I'm sure there's a lot of things that need to be taken to places. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You get your email nice and sorted, and uh, once you got that down, this like one like... muscle on his hat on his arm is like super fucking buff. <laughs> He's just been turning it <laughs> daily. Curtis becomes the quest NPC. <laughs> yeah. You uh, yes. After oh, three you, days, you, a gold exclamation you, point. You, you polish the exclamation <laughs> point to float above you. Yeah. There it is. Nice. I'm ready for them <laughs> when they come. <laughs> And uh, I start, you know, every, every, creating every time like, Kurt, cool, some local yeah, secrets, as, that kind of thing. Yeah. As as, Kurt, as every, every time, like Curtis is just like, I really should do that, like an exclamation mark. And then the second he starts doing it, it becomes a question mark. You know, it's good. <laughs> you uh, yeah. you you make your way around and you do a bit of a stock uh, count. And you realize that you need supplies. Okay. Um. Yeah. Taking a look at like the 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 stocks that we have in the cellar. Um. Uh, it hits him just how bizarre this is going to look when we have a fully stocked larder. Um, I uh, and everyone else in the city is left. I am going to go to the Pixie Tap. Okay. You make oh, the Pixie your way Brothel. Over. Sorry, it's not a tavern. It's <laughs> it's just a sex house. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a house and, of uh, Pixie. Sex and lube. That's where I'm going. It's, it's literally it's like that. a great and, uh, trepidation in his heart that he he goes back to meet with the the, the man of the most lubed hands in the known universe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we'll get to that in just a moment. But uh, as we mm. cut away from you, um, Sarah, you have been out and about today, uh, sort of a whole town to explore. Uh, no one to uh, tell you no. Essentially, everyone's gone off to do their own thing. What does Sarah do today? I feel like Sarah would have ran around to all the empty houses wanting to see everything um, and then very quickly gotten bored. Like, the idea of the adventure was really exciting in her head, but then eventually when there's nobody there, she's just a bored kid. Um, and then I'd want to head off to uh, the castle and try and find paperwork on my dad since it's supposedly abandoned. Okay. So at the beginning of the day, uh, Sarah, you can make me. Uh, you can give me a D two. We'll see. Um, as you're making your way through, investigating uh, some of these houses, I want to see how. On a two, okay, on a two, these people left in a hurry. Uh, the first house is a complete bust. You come in and there's a scene of absolute chaos. There's overturned tables and chairs. Uh, the bed has been torn open with a blade and like all, this, all the uh, the like hay and everything has been pulled out and strewn all over the floor. Um, you can see one of the shutters from the window has been torn off and just hangs limply there. The larder has been emptied. Um, everything has been sort of piled up and grabbed. I am trying to slip Duran all the time, by the way. If he is trying to follow me, I am just making his life a living hell in that regard. Uh, you've got two ways of doing that. You can either try and stealth, or you can just 
try and outrun him. Uh, he has a gut wound and cannot run properly at the moment. You can also climb through holes that he cannot. Like, you have, <laughs> you're a kid, you're outrunning someone who's basically just been, you know, is recovering from massive surgery to his abdomen. Uh, how do you give him the slip? I'm going to go with stealth because I don't want him to know what I'm looking for. Okay. I don't know why that's rolling an advantage. No, disadvantage. Yeah, that's, okay. Disadvantage. That's a so, net one. Okay. One in that one. Um, that bastard is uh, somehow there every time. Like, it's like he fucking knows where you're going to be. And every time you, like, he doesn't get there before you, he's not quite that ninja, but it doesn't matter which house you go to, you, you're like, I'm being random, I'm going completely random places, look at me. And uh, he just knows, he's just there. But you get some time to yourself beforehand to explore. <laughs> Come on, this is, uh, this is... I attack the darkness, just... Don't do it. <laughs> this is naughty um, sports. <laughs> this is your friend. I mean, on you. Oh. Um, you know, you uh, you're having a rough a rough time against Duran. Uh, you were one for one, and he just seems to have the edge on you at every turn. What do you do? Other than stare at me like you can burn through my soul with your eyes. What are you doing? Why are you following me? What's wrong with me trying to get a moment by myself? You know that there's nobody in this town anymore. You don't have to look after me like I'm a little child. He, don't he's you like, have some healing to do? He nods and uh, he's leaning against the door just like... <gasps> like trying to keep his catch his breath. Clearly in pain, but he says times like these when people get the idea that looting is probably on the table the smart ones have already done it and moved on but other people have been waiting for the serious contenders these people are desperate you're a tough kid but I don't want you to have to take your life it's with a squabble over grain or I don't want any food. I just want... I just... You don't, but others do. I'm just trying to watch after you, okay? She just stares at him. He tries to distract you by pointing at sort of the carnage in this first room, uh, this first house that you proper got to ex uh, explore, and he says... I guess these people learned a couple of secrets. Points to you the think bed. that if I told you something, you could keep your mouth shut about it? That it could stay just between us, between family? He, like, he winces and you get the feeling it's not because of the gut wound, as you say the word family seems to hit him like a hammer. And he... Mm -hmm leans against the door frame uh, trying to make it look casual and he nods can sure. I incite him to make sure he isn't fucking lying yeah absolutely <laughs> oh my god on a 13 he seems genuine but again like he's He's a lot hard to read because a lot of his expression is pain. Well, I suppose it's all right, because if you tell anyone, but I'll just have to finish you off, and I won't have to do much now, will I? You're pretty much doing it to yourself at this point. And maybe if you walked a little slower. What is it? This, she says, reaching into her bag and pulling out the gem that she pulled from the prince's crown. I found this a while ago when we were with Gavin Fjordhammer and I don't know I just took it and now I want to know more about it 
if there's information here in the castle. And I also want to know where my dad is. If there's anywhere, there's soldiers report somewhere in here. He nods slowly and he stares at the crystal but seems to sort of snap out of it when you say about your dad. He says, I don't know of any notes about your father at the castle. But then... But you would have known... You would have known what contingent he was a part of. Soldiers... This go in groups, and we could at least narrow down the area that he was. I'm looking for it with you or without you. Dara. I didn't know of any notes or reports on your father. But I didn't have access to everywhere. It's a chance, but it's slim. And I'd know where to look. Well, go on then. Savarus's quarters and one other place. A king, a prince, whoever was the ruler at the time. There was a place hidden away past their chambers. I don't know where it is, but I know if we go into the royal chambers, we had some time. Why I understand the prince didn't know much about magic, so it's probably something simple, something physical, trapdoor, bookcase, false bottom, something I don't know. I don't know what's beyond it, just that it exists, supposedly. What? You're saying a man of your stature wasn't given free route around the castle? That you couldn't just go and about as please torturing people? There's a reason. She smiles. <laughs> he he nods and says, "There's a reason that my work was so close to the prison cells." wasn't just because a lot of my work was done with prisoners, I imagine, probably because people wanted me out of sight and out of mind. I wasn't particularly liked. This stuff has changed. Are you still holding the gem in your hand? Yeah, I'm just kind of playing with it the same way I'm kind of playing with my dice. Just not really, not like sleight of hand or anything, but I'm just kind of rolling it around yeah, and yeah, feeling cool. it. Because I haven't, I don't really pull it out or touch it or play with it, and it's a gem, and Sarah's from a poor yeah, background, so she's, yeah. she's fascinated cool. by it. Can you do any tricks of it? Can you, like, roll across your hands or, like, the backs My, of your fingers or anything like that? I used to practice ledger domain when I wanted to be, like, Raceland as a kid, but I can't do it with something as small as a d20. Yes, I wanted does, to be Raceland. Laugh at me. Does Sarah do any of those tricks? Or, like, try and She could like, try. Yeah. She could try. Okay. I mean, let's give it a go. Oh. A 14. She might be able to move it back and forth on her hands, maybe. You might have been able to, except it doesn't want to. You're no longer gripping it. The second you're no longer gripping it, it moves entirely on its own. Now, it doesn't move fast, and it doesn't move away from you. It actually moves closer to you and hovers in front of you. All right then, we can't blame this one on Lucy. She's not even here. Duran, like, tries to draw his sword and almost, like, collapses because he's been following you and you've been a brat, sort of, like, sneaking through alleyways and stuff, and he... Oh, like, she would have been, like parkour like trying to everything she, yeah it would have been miserable so he tries to uh draw this doesn't manage to but you what um, if it's a holy sign she says holding up her hand of saint cuthbert hmm. 
it begins to spin round your head very slowly and as it does so um you've been attuned to this for a while but you haven't actually got it out and used like you need to essentially no, know what I've to been do with hiding it. it yeah it begins to float around your head uh you actually have accidentally entirely accidentally found a legendary item that you've had in your back pocket for fucking action. You found an iron stone of regeneration. What? You mean I could have fixed my arm earlier? What the no, fuck is stone? Not... Okay, so, I hear regeneration and I would have... It's not, that, it's not oh. that powerful. It's not that powerful. Okay. But it does do the following. You regain 15 hit points at the end of each hour. This pearly white spindle orbits your head, provided you have at least one hit point. Per hour? Yeah. I'm sorry. I, um... What? <laughs> Woo! Let's go save everything! So, it will take exactly an hour to orbit your head once. Uh, it will float in place, um, and you, it doesn't sort of, like get buffeted or anything like that, but all you see is this thing come to a dead stop in front of you, just about sort of out of, like, if you look if you look up, you can see it floating there, but it's not sort of, like, directly in your face or annoying, saying, like, you swat at, but um, it hovers there, and you suddenly feel yourself, like, any cuts and nicks, like, you know, all the little, like, you've got a... a a cut through your pants leg as you've like pulled yourself through a tiny window or a cruel space. Your hands are a little like got splinters and stuff in them. And suddenly, Sarah, all of them, all of these minor scrapes heal. Your bruises sort of melt away and your arm feels slightly stronger, more uh, usable. It doesn't return the feeling sensation, but it's more usable. Your grip is more sturdy. Duran looks at you like you've grown a second head. Well, I don't know what it is. It pretty cunning, don't you think? <laughs> it starts to glow orange ever so slightly. Thank you. He sort of like looks at it and holds up his sword and just says like don't move. And he holds his sword what? so like the flat of the blade is in its path and it comes round and just tinks and stops. And he pulls the sword back. I got nothing. What the fuck? I think it's time to go and see Lucy. Oh but wait, Mida. We still he, like, is just staring at it like, oh god. I, like, and almost absentmindedly not taking his eyes off it for a second, says, Lucy's out. Uh, uh, we'll have to talk to her about that tonight. How are you making it do that? I mean... Obviously magic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's not in character. I don't know. How do I heal people? How does oh, Lucy do anything? It's... How do trees Lucy, grow? How does Lucy function? <laughs> Super valid. <laughs> <laughs> Should have asked that question a long time ago. Like, how, does, how, do, how do Lucy? Lucy, what the fuck? <laughs> All true. All, All true. true. So, yeah, he... Uh... I don't need to eat or drink while this thing spins over my head? Uh, no. Let me just... Is uh, this... Ironstone, so yeah, so, um... 
Do I get all of these abilities? No, this is not no, one no, item. No, 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 no. no. Okay, uh, I was a like. Bunch of different iron stones, yeah. Okay. Which one does she have? Uh, you have the uh, one of regeneration. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's just okay. regeneration, That's... and it's twenty-four hit points. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you were tuned to this, and then like you went into the the only time you've ever had it out the bag was in an anti magic zone. And I was like, it's a fucking. That's the reason. So you put the crown on, and it was floating above your head. When you step back into the anti magic zone, it stopped floating and just fell. That's why it fell in front of you. It's from the crown. I just. I just oh, God. It was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. Whole thing. Yeah. So, you, uh. Yeah, like. E. Duran says, like, informs you that Lucy went out for the day and hasn't returned back yet. Uh, and said she'd be gone for some time. Um, Calvin is off. He doesn't know where Calvin is. You'll probably find him because he's in town somewhere. Uh, Curtis doesn't know anything about magic. So if you want to wait for Lucy and be like, Lucy, what this? Why Why it do? No. Um, no. I want to go and find out about my father. Okay. So he says we can... Head up to the castle. If it's still unoccupied. What's the worst that could happen? It's not unoccupied. It's been taken by bandits. They have the supplies from the armory. We're shot as we approach. What's the second worst thing that could happen? They don't shoot us as we approach. This Smallest line of continuation <laughs> in a very childlike manner. What's the third thing? What's the fourth thing? What's the fifth thing? What's the sixth Alligators. thing? What's the seventh Bitch. thing? Yeah, and I just I attempt I attempt to in a very fifteen year old girl way uh, wear him down with pointless questions. It succeeds. Like eventually, he's just sort of like he shuts up and just like follows you. You notice that you're leading him. Uh, as he starts to like lag behind ever so slightly, uh, struggling. As you approach the castle, you see Curtis coming out from the uh, the entranceway and making his way back towards the tavern. I'm slipping documents into my <laughs> you know, breast pocket. As I say this. You, you see him step out and like slide a brown envelope with like top secret stamped across it into his jacket. <laughs> look around, pull his fedora load, pop his collar, and he walks off. You also notice that I just got is... a spy versus spy <laughs> kind of yeah. Yeah, everything is black and white. You notice. He's, he's got a balaclava on, he's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Suddenly, he's never smoked before. But... <laughs> you look up, you look up, you see the castle is entirely red. He heads back towards the tavern, which is blue. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. There's a blue spy in the base! So, you, um... Yeah, you see him sort of uh, making his way out. You don't actually see him, like, carrying anything. It just looks like he's been to look around the castle. Or uh, what have you? Do you uh, interact with him, or do you lay low and wait for him to pass? As you head on. Uh, Curtis. Yeah. Curtis, look! I've got a glowing ball above my head. Oh, fucking hell! Oh, I see you later. Oh. Okay, okay, <laughs> dude. Look after yourselves. There's <laughs> Lunas inside. Curtis is just like, like five Lunas inside. <laughs> like shouting at her from like across the street, you know. There's like five looters inside. Bad guys. Is he lying? Uh, you can inside check him. I'm, I don't know if he's trying to scare me or if he's being serious. What the fuck is that? Plus nine to int? Uh, yeah, inside that's um, Prodigy. Oh boy. Prodigy oh. is great. Thank you, Xanthar's mm. guide. Uh, on an 18, uh, no, he's not lying to you. There are five. Uh, although he hasn't come out weapon drawn, he's come out looking casual as fuck. So, like, 
you would imagine it's probably not the most dangerous place ever. All right. Let's go inside. <laughs> Come on, Duran. Duran, like, sword drawn, uh, is kind of almost sort of letting it hang close to the floor, not quite dragging it. And uh, he will follow you inside as Curtis just, like, fucking floating, like, what the fucking tree. Fucking, fucking everything. Just floating your head. <laughs> I grumble. Does nothing, why does nothing stay on the ground like it's supposed to be? <laughs> I, I grumble off screen. <laughs> so, Sarah, Sarah makes her way in. Uh, are you trying to avoid these uh, looters or are you like Duran? Yeah, is I mean, no. I'm stealthing. Give me that stealth roll. Duran is going to also try and. Damn. Okay. How badly does Duran... Not a net 20, pocket? dirty 20. Yeah, dirty 20. Uh, Duran fucks it up only minorly, uh, surprisingly, uh, on an 11 at disadvantage. He uh, he comes sort of quietly behind you, and you manage to make it past these guys, although at one point, like, he knocks into something, and you see them sort of peering around, uh, and then decide... They don't want to know. They're not going to go pry. Like, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. We won't bother you. Please don't bother us. As they gather up the last of their gear and you make your way past. And uh, he's going to lead you up into Stavros's chamber. He comes up in front of you, weapon, sword sort of shaking in his hand as he's had a long day. Uh, and makes it into Stavros's quarters. Uh, I think for you, yeah, this is kind of important. So you can, do you want to roll your nat 1 versus nat 20 here, or do you want to roll your nat 1 versus nat 20 in the royal quarter? Whichever one you get here, you get the opposite of in the other place. Uh, I will go for the royal quarter. Okay. All right. So I'll let you... An actual roll here. Ah! No, you said one. No, I thought you said D two or one or two. Okay, so you want so nat one royal quarters, so nat twenty up here. You come up, and look around. The first thing you'll notice is that someone battered their way in here, and again, it was locked from the inside. Uh, you can't figure out how he got out, and then you think uh, maybe magic and stuff like that, but. You're new to magic. However, despite that, you don't sense, like, you sense the orb. You sense Lucy ever since you've been traveling. You sense, like, the tree and a, bit, a few bits and pieces. Magical stuff, like, you're starting to get a flavor from. There's none of that in here. Now, maybe it's faded over time, but it doesn't appear to be any sort of teleportation uh, rooms or anything like that. Um, and then you get to one of the walls, and you realize that this wall has been moved or shifted in some way. It's been molded, it would seem. Molded hmm. by it. Can I chip away at it? Move it? Uh, you come over to it. There's some, you know, there's a few tools lying around, bits and pieces, not really up here, but you could go and get something. Like, you've seen, like, there's, uh, like, crowbars and uh, not really picks or, like, proper mason's tools, but there's, you know, like, an iron bar on the floor that you could use almost sort of... Uh, to uh, to sort of chip away at the wall, use it like a makeshift chisel. Hmm. Don't really have anything that I could. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. gonna be my best bet. I don't have any spells of like pass wall or anything like that. Can I? Duran is useless. Uh... Duran Duran is like <laughs> looking at like brooding through the fire or what was left of the wreckage. I have. 
Mm, okay, can I go look for some tools and then use one of my nat 20s on breaking past that? Okay, you go look for some tools. Takes you some time. You find uh, what appears to be um, essentially big Art, like stakes uh, that are probably meant for sort of uh, pinning stuff to walls, like uh, notices and stuff. You find uh, like a, a hammer, and you come up and you begin to uh, chip away at the wall. And uh, it takes you some time, and you get into the point where you just like, this is fucking pointless. You've you've buried like it almost up to the uh, the end of it in the wall several times, and. Duran looks out and it's like the sun is starting to get low in the sky. It's probably about four o'clock in the afternoon. He says, we should probably head back. And then you hit that nail one more time. And he's been nagging you for some time. It's starting to get to you like you were getting to him. And then you hit and your nail goes straight in. And it goes in by about maybe two inches. Um and like just sticks in place like buried all the way up to uh the, the end in the wall as if suddenly you've hit like a hollow spot <laughs> well well you see you see could have done this earlier if you weren't nagging so much uh, can I like try and wrench it and like move it around, or am I going to be yeah, stuck you, without you, more help? No, you 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 brought a t uh, crowbar with you, and this is your nat twenty, so you pry it, and as you do, you pull like it takes you some time, but it slides out, and it gets almost the whole way out, and then it pops slightly. And can you make me a con save? Fuck. Uh, yes, I can. Here we go. That's a. 19. On a 19, you don't throw up. Uh, Duran uh, isn't going to make the con save because uh, he doesn't need to. He's, uh, he smelt this before. The end of the nail is covered in what looks to be congealed sludge. Uh, like a grey, gr like green in places. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Um, it looks like it might be blood, and there is fragments of bone that are stuck to it. She says. <laughs> Duran like oh. comes over and tries to like pull you to one side as best he can, and takes the nail from you. This is like a railway spike, so it's a fair ways in and he just looks at it, puts it like close to his mouth. It's like, oh, oh, but he sniffs and winces. What and... are you doing? What are you doing? What? What? No. So, okay, what is it? <laughs> right, okay. I, I got that. From, from the spell. He walks over and he he's standing there and then he leans slightly to the side so you can see the hole. There's just a hole uh, but there is a tiny trickle that is coming out and just running down the wall. He stands next to it. It comes up to about here on him where you've drilled the hole in. You're muted. You muted yourself. You're still muted. Or I can't hear things. Yeah, Josh is muted. Okay. No, I, I, I was sorry. I was just trying to you think of how to explain this. <laughs> yeah, I just wasn't saying anything. Um, okay. He he pats against the wall and sort of you see him like very painstakingly run his hand round. He he looks at you and says, "I can't find the mechanism anywhere." A what? A, a lever, a button. I can't even see any seams in the wall. I don't think that they were meant to get out again. I think they were meant to stay in there and rot. Oh, fuck. 
Um... Can I, once I've gotten over the disgustingness of it, try and take a look at, like, the clothes, like, look inside, see if there's anything pitch that... Black. Is it the prince? Is it the prince? It's pitch black on the other side. Don't I? I have spells now. <laughs> I believe I might actually have light. Mm. I have radiance. Fuck. Do you have any yep. prestidigitation, fire, or anything like that? No. Uh, there's got to be a candle here in the yeah. castle somewhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm over. Um, I will. I will go through the process of finding something that I can light and get light in there. As you oh, look, you are looking for a hole that's probably about an inch wide. Uh, maybe a little wider, um, slightly square, as this is from essentially a railway spike you've hammered into the wall. You look in, you have a tiny narrow view, it ends abruptly, but there is definitely something in the wall. It's not in a crawl space or anything. What? Okay, first I'm going to look for a lever, and if I can't find one, then I'm going to reach in the hole. I said it out loud. So okay. I'm committing to it. You are not going to be able to reach it. It's it's about that wide. Like you do like, your, you can widen it over time if you want. Like you can absolutely now you've got starting, you know where you're aiming. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Um you have a glance around, give me uh give me an investigation check. Mm -hmm. On the 23, 23? there isn't one. However, glory hole. however, the body got in this, it is, uh, it wasn't put in, there's no crawl space, there's no space there. Like, it is encased in the wall. And the wall itself looks exactly as old as the rest of the room does. But it smells fresher than, like, there's no way, like, this castle... This castle predates you, predates Duran, predates, like, f five generations of the royals. The body should not be fresh. Okay, it's it's time to go and get the rest of the party, I think, because this could potentially be the prince. And if it's the prince's body, then we have a duty as a people to inform yeah. the monarchy <laughs> and the government. <laughs> duty. Ah, duty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, we're going to see, uh, Curtis and Calvin, you guys are, um, meeting up. Uh, Curtis, I presume you've come to talk to supplies and stock and a few bits. Um, as you come up, uh, you see Lucy dragging, uh, riding in with a, on her stag, and she's dragging a big-ass carcass behind her of a fresh kill. Do I want to know? Uh, uh, well, uh, I brought us dinner, uh, and uh, it threw it business, I guess. Um, didn't like that, but I also found silverware and, uh, glasses and things. You know, ship that I, uh, washed in, like, I'll look towards I Calvin. Found things. That's very helpful. Calvin's like in the process of coming down on a lift, I imagine. Yeah. Well, uh, did Calvin, Calvin, by any chance, find salt? Yes. Fairy's <laughs> magic salt. Uh, you didn't find uh, magic salt, but you found salt. Um, it's one of the things. Yeah, they just salt weighs a ton, uh, and they just oh, yeah. have, have the. So. Uh, yeah, she's so helpful. However, we can all uh, probably do that meat. I found a big old bag of salt up here. We dress that carcass up, salt it down, and uh, it'll keep. Yes, uh, are you experienced in that sort of thing? I'm really uh, not. <clears throat> I think uh, I do need to I'm, keep I'm not the best in the world, but I ain't bad. It's better than me. I'll take it. 
Um, where's Sarah? I thought she was. Well, she's at the castle. No, she's at the castle. She went in with Duran. There are like five looters in there, but I figured they'd be fine. She had some kind of flying orb over her head. I I couldn't deal with it, to be honest with you. Well, she had a what? I I I was past the point of no return. I'm past the point of no return. <laughs> I'm still there. I'm Carry gone. On. Long past. Far gone. <laughs> uh, so far past. Right. We'll worry about that later. Uh, for now, I, I would. guess we should do do deal with this. Right. Um, and I'm sorry. There's people putting my there. Oh, just fixing place up, you know. But we have a. Yeah, I'm oh. fixing up the place. Right, right, of course. <clears throat> so sorry. <clears throat> That's fine. That's all right. That's Enjoy uh. Your, your <laughs> fix. I figure, you know, yeah. we might as well have extra room for all them soldiers that are coming. There's going to mm. be a lot of them, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, gives everyone some space. Yeah. Yes. As Calvin brings goes back, he hauls himself back up there, loads on the salt, which is, I know, as you said, quite heavy, drags it on there, yeah. comes back down, starts uh, getting it ready. He does make a point of, oh, as he opens the bag, kind of flings some salt at uh, <laughs> at Lucy. <laughs> Because his so mama shame. told him yeah. superstitions about magic. So much salt. Which is so much so actual salt. salt. <laughs> Literal. <laughs> We've got to that point on the march where we're actually <laughs> slinging salt at each other. Like, we got it to He's usually a good liar, but he's really not good at, about lying about this. So he's, yeah. <laughs> Feels awkward about it all. Uh, oh, I actually sorry. take Lucy to. Uh, yeah, I'm like looking at her and see if like, she starts smoking or anything. Stop burning me! <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I'm going to just take Lucy to the side for a second and kind of whisper in her and say, Yeah, um, you know the whole, um, like 100 feet in the sky, floating mm-hmm. towards the sea, crazy mm-hmm. trees, explosions, everyone yes. losing their arms and stuff like that. Well, um... Turns out Calvin's kind of a superstitious guy. Uh, he thinks it's I'm my only... fault. Right, right. And for those of us who are only a little bit stitious, like myself, you know, I, I think it's reasonable to think that maybe there's you know, something involving you going on, but it's totally not your fault. So I just wanted you to know that... Um, you did notice she's fine. riding in on a stag, hauling a stag behind her. Calvin, it's rude to overhear people's conversations. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I'll well, just pretend like I'm not listening over here as you're talking should, right there. Should we go find a, a lake or something? You can throw me in, see if I sink. Would that prove it? Is that Calvin oh, this and Lucy great. Wild, wild Magic Surge? Magic <laughs> surge <yeah. laughs> For the salt room. This is like in Warhammer, and it's like oh, Chad. they give I they love. give every NPC a Wild Magic Surge, and when inevitably something terrible happens, we burn them <laughs> because <laughs> we're witch hunters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alrighty, that's. Hey, look at me, I'm lead. Lead, man, yeah. Uh, Calvin sprouts a pretty flower from his chin. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and what's hers? Hey, uh, and... let me. Yeah. Calvin, Thank you, me. RNG Jesus, so much for this Cal- beautiful Cal- gift. That was so perfect. Calvin, next mag- what, uh, plant-based magic around you renders you a vegetarian. <laughs> Or is it the caster? The caster on the plant based magic? I know it's No, that might be him in this case. I don't know. Let's go. What was it again? Because I thought it was. uh, Yeah, it makes the. uh, It makes the caster, so. So whoever casts the magic becomes vegetarian? You become vegetarian? I love. I think. I think Lucy's like. I I think. I will hunt you down. 
I think Calvin's about to show her how to gut an animal, and like I can imagine that turning Lucy vegetarian. <laughs> Done with Amazing. me forever. Um, uh, Lucy's wild magic is that her head is scarred as low splits down the middle. Hey, cool anime scar. Go me. Like where the salt hit. <laughs> I, I pluck uh, the, I pluck the uh, flower out of my chin <laughs> and I hand it to Curtis. Whoopsie. Yeah. Did I do that? Oh, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. What a nice that look you got going on there, darling. What? Oh! Oh, God. I got a like a mirror Let me take, or something I'll reflected. I'll get this stag taken care of in, in the bloodiest, <gasps> goriest mess. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's All just... Right. <clears throat> Was that fairy salt? No, apparently I didn't leave so. no fairy salt behind. No, apparently that was like a <gasps> fairy Looks salt. Looks pretty isn't? lubed. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty low from where I'm standing. You know, you know when are disgusting and should feel bad. <laughs> you know when you know when there's that guy in the office who, uh, after stirring his uh, his coffee, puts his spoon back in the sugar, and the sugar gets all clumpy. It's like that with the salt, but it's just loo. So that you clumpy get like the uh, uh, clumpy, clumpy salt. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the so, worst. As all of this goes on, and you guys, uh, are you going, it's it's now the awkward conversation, uh, Curtis, you witness of my place or yours, um, as uh, yeah. you've got to gut um, this, you got to gut this thing somewhere. Oh, I yeah, think we gonna, got it here. Yeah. Calvin's, Calvin's doing it here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, Lucy, uh, I think there is something I need to hand with. <laughs> Worst lie ever now that I say that. I think there's something I needed a hand with. Curtis is a good liar. He's got like an extension of plus nine. Will is unfortunately she an idiot. She just and gives him this. A Tuesday. She gives, she uh, gives him a, a look that might be vaguely dis disappointed because he's a better liar than that. I feel like he would probably say something like, there is a specific item which I need help with. Um, but let's, let's roll that for now. Um, but yeah, yeah, you hear that. Uh, I see. You. As Calvin oh, rips yeah. open oh. the guts of this. He's doing it right here, like, on the lift. Oh. So, yeah. Just, um, oh. don't throw away the... As this happens, Help. and, and you're like... Oh. As this yeah. happens, and yep. there's like the kind of moment, uh, you see Sarah running down the road towards you guys. Oh, great. Lord, what now? <laughs> uh, she has something Just orbiting her it. head. Um, I feel like Lucy would probably know what that is. Should I make a check? You can give me an arcana. Sure. Uh, as, yeah, Sarah, you, you find everyone. There is a huge uh, semi-butchered, or in the process of being butchered, stag carcass. Uh, Lucy is a slight tinge of green, and Curtis just looks sad, and he's holding a single flower. <laughs> He's What's like a mime on? right out of France. <laughs> He's like um, sad clown. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Sarah, what do you say as you approach? I think that I found a dead guy in a wall. And it might be the prince. The prince? What? what? Fuck. It's in the royal chambers and we broke Colin. it open with a spike and... Okay, okay. Uh, just got a shout out to Calvin, get over here. You might have found the prince. He comes walking over. He has blood yeah. all the way up to his elbows. Oh. Yeah. yeah, um. <laughs> what's with Lucy? Get, get a handle of yourself, woman. <laughs> <gasps> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but, 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 anyways. Yes, um, sir. We went into the castle just to have a look around, and we ended up in the royal quarters, and w I saw that some of the wall looked different, and I broke it open, and inside there was... She says, recalling the smell. <laughs> there was a person... There was a person... There was a person As... inside, and it the time... 
just come to help. I will start uh, uh, running running out for her. <laughs> Show me the way. <laughs> As you guys, uh, is everyone going? Calvin, yeah, I guess I'm going. Yeah. Right, actually, going? what I first will do though is I will haul the, the carcass yeah, up, up, so it's not yeah, like yeah. sitting on the ground yeah, yeah. that some like yeah. like wolves yeah. or something can come get it. Make sure that it's at least yeah, yeah exactly. up there. I haven't like... finished dressing it, but you guys uh, make your way. Lucy, your stag accompanies you all the way to sort of the point where you get into the courtyard and it can't come any further because it's huge antlers. Um, and you make your way through, and up, and it's not actually the royal quarters; it's Stavros's private quarters, so the spy master's quarters. Um, you haven't had a chance to have a look at the royal quarters yet. But you make your way up, and you get there, and Duran is uh, basically widened uh, the hole somewhat, um, and he's just completely like pale, looks really shaken. Uh, on the floor next to him is the spike, and on the other side is his uh, hammer, and he's leant against the uh, edge of essentially a broken piece of furniture, just staring. And there is now no longer a sort of a small hole. Uh, there is about sort of this big, a jagged hole in the wall. Um, and it's dark, it's hard to make out, but the smell that comes out, Lucy, is enough to curdle butter at a glance. It's... Mm. Who's uh, who's going to have a look? I sure as hell will. Oh, Calvin will. Yeah. Calvin and Curtis, you step up. You see inside there is indeed a man who is encased in stone entirely there's no crawl space the bottom part of uh this sort of like the middle sort of just under his nose his top jaw has been smashed where the uh, nail came through the wall um his teeth are missing and uh blood is sort of like pulled out and made a mess of his chin but there's no doubt in your mind you have found Stavros. Oh, okay. And that is where we're going to wrap up for the evening. Damn. Yeah. Oh my. I was not expecting that. Not expecting that well, at all. Not speaking of that. Fuck. Everyone said huh. he was Did this? I look at Duran. Did Duran do this? <laughs> Damn it, Duran! <laughs> Duran, the well-known uh, lithomancy, uh, practiced in stone shaping and melding and magic and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We don't fucking know anything I mean, he could about have done this dude. Like, yeah, he could do it. Like, don't tell me you wouldn't pull some bullshit. Where, like, down the line, Duran turns out he is like a really high-level necromancer, and he just hasn't been using it this whole time. Like, that is something you would do. <laughs> I mean, a reasonable cause. <laughs> Oh man, well, that's what we're going to end tonight's episode of The Long March, my friends. If you enjoyed it, let us know. And of course, stick with us here because we've got the World Tree Burns coming up in just a few moments' time here, uh, our official Midgard campaign. So join with us for that as we are actually fighting a dragon, I'm pretty sure. At least there is definitely a dragon there, and I don't think he's going to be friends with us, but we'll see. Uh, let's go around to Carson Crew, though. Did we enjoy ourselves? Where can we find you guys online? Let's start with our Dungeon Master, Josh. Greg on Twist there, Josh. Uh, what do you think? Indeed. Uh, it was good. Uh, just yeah, they um, he he vanished. Um, he didn't turn up for the coronation, and as you saw, the room was locked from the inside. So it's uh, troubling, troubling times, and uh, certainly mm. throws some mud in the water about what is actually going on here. But I'm I'm excited to uh, to unveil uh, unveil every new rotten layer of this uh, this wonderful little story. So. Thank you guys. Um, Lucy, uh, just, just, just quit. <laughs> just, just, you're doing something. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what it is. I don't know what, like, there's something you're doing that is not jiving with the universe. Um, but everything's out to get you, and I love it. I love it so, so it's much. It's fine. Uh, oh, hey, um, whatever works. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've Lucy had Lucy has a giant target on her back. 
Yeah, exactly. It's fine. It's no problem at all. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, find out more as uh, next week uh, we'll signal a little bit more of what the party do uh, with regards to this revelation, and then they're going to have to potentially not front up and actually be tavern owners as there is an army arriving next week. So it's going to be very exciting. As for me, uh, my name is Josh. You can find me on account of they doing this. An hour before this um, starts, I finish up on the Greyhawk channel uh, in a three-hour thing with Love, Love, Lindsay. And um, catch me on Tone Cloaks. Usually I will be on Midgard straight after this, but... I have had the day of days, and I, I I have to sleep, unfortunately, so I'm... And also, you're fighting a dragon. Fuck that, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Great stuff. Thank you, Josh. And Jess, great job tonight, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, <laughs> what are you even ever doing? <laughs> uh, it was a super fun time. <laughs> she tries so hard, my poor girl. Um... No, it was wonderful. Uh, I'm excited to see what the heck we do with this new revelation of ours. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Little Cup of Joe. I do some things on Twitch there as well. And uh, then you find me here on Tuesdays on Encounter Roleplay. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Jess. And Cool School. Hey, how you doing? Uh, uh, Little Cup of Joe, I love you, but Calvin hates you. <laughs> I love you too, School. Lucy's starting uh, but, to not uh, like it. Yeah, it's no, fine. I had a great time as always. And uh, it's fun. And I got to do another one of my fun songs. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing our shirt that for Bird in the Storm uh, Publishing, which uh, we've got a few extras that we'll be giving away at Gen Con. Check out our stuff at this link to this tweet. Uh, stuff that we are doing. Uh, we will have our first module um, work in progress for some playtesting at Gen Con and then digitally very soon. And uh, yeah. We will uh, see you at Gen Con and other fun things. So thanks. You can find me all over social media as Tall Squall. Great stuff. And Laurelania. Hi, guys. Lots of fun today. Definitely interesting finding Stavros behind a wall and rotten after a few months. That's gross. Uh, you can find me at my Tia Zimmer on Twitter, Laurelania here on Twitch, and I'm lurking in the Encounter Roleplay Discord from time to time, and I'll be here in literally, like, oh, look, 10 minutes on World Tree Burn, so don't go anywhere. Great stuff. Thank you, guys. Um, and, of course, make sure to join in the Encounter Roleplay Discord if you haven't already. And another big thank you goes to our sponsors, uh, Fancy Grounds and Wayland Games. But stick around here. The World Tree Burns is coming up in just a few minutes' time. And until then, try not to roll too many that ones because we want to be there laughing when you do. Good night, everybody. <laughs>